That's really good. No problem. <laughs> we are live. Good morning. Wake up with Toastmasters. I am your host today, Jennifer Smith, the district PRM. And look who I have today. I have our club growth director, Ken Richardson. Hi, Ken. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I am good. Thank you. I think it's a little damp outside, so I'm pretty excited about the weather. My dogs aren't, so I'm petting one of them right now. <laughs> actual <laughs> actual rain. That's a that's a novelty. Yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting that it rained in December. Sometimes we just don't get that here in Las Vegas. Right. So for our audience, we are based out of Las Vegas. You know, for those who are not familiar with us, we are part of District 115 for Toastmasters. And the purpose of our show is just to tell you a little bit about our journeys with Toastmasters and the benefits. Sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. But uh, today we do not have a guest. But since we have Ken on, I don't think Ken and I have a conversation about his journey. So I'm really curious about a few things. So I figure mm -hmm. I will just interview him today instead of, <laughs> I did that to Phyllis last, last time as well. I'm like, oh, Phyllis, let me talk. Let's hear about you. So one of the things that I really wanted to know, because I haven't had a chance to ask you, Ken, is this your first round of being a district officer? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, I've been a Toastmaster for 14 years. And I have served as an area governor. Well, it's area director now, excuse me. <laughs> but back in the day, it was an area governor and then a division governor, division director. Today, I was the administration manager, which is the secretary for District 33 uh, under the Guy Dawson administration. So Guy and I were on that team together. And then when District 115 was formed, I served the first two years as administration manager for District 115, and now am club growth director. Very good. So you haven't done the ranks of the district director yet. I'm sorry? No, yeah. I haven't. No, I haven't been a district director yet. <laughs> so, and that is the, the goal next year? No, you? next year, uh, if uh, uh, all goes uh, according to plan, then I would be the program quality director. Oh, that's right. And uh, Jean Williams would move up to district director, and we will have a brand new person, new to the trio, uh, voted in as the club growth director. Gotcha. Well, I know that we are looking, right? We're starting to look for certain uh Volunteers, I want to say, to be elected into the area director, division director, and then eventually we'll start making the call for nominations for the club growth director as well. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's uh, we're constantly recruiting leaders, and I hope that all of our area directors will consider the opportunity to move up as, as district uh, directors. And that the district directors will consider moving up to uh, club growth director or public relations manager or, uh, <laughs> to give you some relief. I know you've done a terrific job <laughs> in the past couple of years and you probably are in need of a break. Uh, but, I am, but I, I have a little birdie in my ear. I don't know if it's a birdie or somebody sitting on my shoulder named D. George Lund. And he is telling me, telling me, volunteer, holding me that I should run for division director. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, I look back, it's, it's been a while, uh, but my division, the old division H, which is now, that was in, uh, in district 33, which is now division A in district 115, uh, we were select distinguished division that year. Uh, I had a great team of area directors who worked uh, very, very hard uh, to serve their clubs. And, you know, looking back, I often think, you know, now that I've, I've had these experiences over the years, I think I should go back and be an area director again, because I know how I would do it better. You know? <laughs> and, 
And that's sort of Go up common. the banks and then come back down. <laughs> that's exactly, exactly, because you, you learn so much along the way and so much has changed. You know, when I was area and division uh, governor, director, uh, we didn't have pathways. We were still working the manuals. We didn't have Zoom. We were all in person. Uh, so uh, one of my clubs, I remember um, fondly, by the way, was uh, when I was division director was Pahrump. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know much about Pahrump, but uh, I connected with Pam Ranieri. I don't know if you, if you know Pam and her husband, Phil, both distinguished Toastmasters, both retired from the Air Force. And Pam is a past dis uh, district director herself. And so I, I made several trips to Pahrump and it was just really a wonderful experience to get out and to meet uh, people beyond my own club. And, and as an area director, you get that opportunity. And uh, I think that builds on your knowledge base and you begin to have an appreciation for the uniqueness of our clubs and the uniqueness of the organization. Yeah, one of the things Phyllis and I were talking about last time was that, you know, when you're an area director or a division director, and then you are actually moving up to the club growth and the program quality director and then the district director, is that you know the people, your club members, your fellow Toastmasters, and then you can draw on them for the support. So when you're that, that, area director and you are talking to your club members and mixing with them and having the time of your life from what all I've heard from area directors is that it's the time of their life <laughs> that as they're going up the ranks that's your your support system right there where if you need something everyone's like oh yeah we had so much fun with Jennifer let's do this you know so <laughs> so I'm actually looking forward to it because of the fact that when uh Jean, Jean and Carol were like, we want you to stay as public relations manager. And I'm like, all right, well, let's do that. But as I figure that I would have to move up to the level of district director, I really, the only people that I actually know are the, the trio people. So how would I get that support for as a district director if I didn't have that growth of being an area director or division director. So for those of you who are listening, our, this is a volunteer uh, membership organization. We're all built with or, uh, volunteers, but we, we do put in a lot of work for those of us who are on the officer level because of the fact of our passion for Toastmasters. So when we talk about being a Toastmasters, it's not really all of this work. So I just wanna make sure you guys understand that, that we do it because we are passionate about the growth and about the learning opportunity. And everybody should know a little bit about Toastmasters to help them grow through as an individual, a, a leader, and you know just a member of society. So anyway, I have to put that plug in because whenever I hear about uh, when I listen to us talk all the time, I'm like, oh, my goodness, it makes it sound like it's so much work. <laughs> well, it, it's work, but it's also a learning experience and it, it's an opportunity uh, to really expand your thought processes, your horizons, if you will. Uh, and to get different perspectives. I mean, that's one of the things that I love is talking to people about, well, how does your club do X, Y, Z? You know, mm -hmm. what is it that makes your club unique? What do you, uh, what would you most use if you were to develop an advertising slogan? For example, uh, Jackpot Speakers has, their slogan is the home of the 30 minute evaluation. So my question to the clubs is, um, what would you use as your tagline? You know, if you were in marketing, and you were developing a tagline uh, for your club, you know, what would it be? Uh, and as you know, I'm a member of Early Risers. That's my home club. We're gonna be meeting here in, a, in about 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, a tagline for us would be rise and shine. Uh, I joined that club uh, because it met at 6.30 a.m. every Wednesday, still does, 
Uh, it's, uh, we just recently celebrated our, our 40th anniversary. We're now into about our 43 years as a club, something like that. We're, we were chartered on uh, June 1st, 1979. Wow. So wow. we've been around a while. And uh, the reason it made sense for me was because I could go attend the meeting, you know, have, have breakfast if I wanted, and then go on to my office by 830. And it was great. And it still works for me because I am an early riser. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's hard to imagine uh, not being a part of that club. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a member of Bon Appetit, which is uh, an advanced club that meets uh, once a month. Uh, and that works well for me, too. Uh, it meets on a Friday and we have a we're now back. We're hybrid, of course. Thank goodness we're back in, in hybrid mode. I like that. I, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, you know, good and bad about both uh, online and, and in person. Mm. But uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be in person uh, with the Bon Appetit Club. And, you know, it's a hybrid meeting. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. But uh, their schedule works well for me as those early risers. And I think that's the key to longevity in, in Toastmasters in large part is, you know, working a schedule uh, that fits your lifestyle or your, your work schedule. Yeah, definitely. I was telling, we were in a meeting last night, right? And I was saying that even though you hear us and we talk about whatever clubs and what time it meets, there's so many other clubs that you can actually join to actually accommodate your schedule. So if you are watching this and you're like, gosh, you know, Toastmaster sounds great, but I just don't have the time or I just don't have the co commitment for it. It's that we, each club meets differently and you can set it up and schedule. You don't have to meet every single week. If that's not your schedule, maybe twice a month would benefit you more so than every week. I, what I get out of, you know, going to Valley Voices and Vices is that it's every week, it's consistent. And for me, it's at 7.30 in the morning. And it's a great way to start my Friday. I, you know, listen, and we learn something, we laugh, and then I have a, a little huddle in our meeting on our branch. And then I'm already, you know, amped up going, ah, you know, just bouncing off walls. And I, I love that. If I maybe had two Valley Voices and Vices twice a week, I think I would probably go because it is just a great way for me to start the the morning. And then for some, it may be something that's lunch hour. If you get your lunch hour and you say, hey, I want to just go to this meeting once a week for Toastmasters, you learn so much, you laugh, what a great way to spend your lunch hour. And now that, you know, most clubs are hybrid, especially during lunch hour, you can actually handle that, you know, versus having to drive 30 minutes, sit for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and then have to drive back. That's a big chunk of your day. So that's probably one of the benefits that you were talking about, Ken, of being hybrid, you know, the Zoom. Yes, and I think I think we're, our clubs are still experimenting. We're learning how to create better uh, hybrid meetings. Uh, some uh, are quite challenging if you don't have uh, some of the equipment uh, or the know-how. And I know Kristen Harrell and her husband, Anthony, are just uh, very gracious about sharing their expertise. Uh, so you can always contact them. Kristen has a video on YouTube mm -hmm. on how to, uh, and I, I think there's a link to that on our website as well. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. And that, uh, where she talks about how to, how to set up a hybrid meeting in, in the best of circumstances. And unfortunately, not all of our clubs will have access to the kind of equipment uh, that, that you need. Yeah. Uh, but you can do it on a shoestring as well. You can have everybody's cell phone can connect to a Zoom meeting, for example. Uh, and I know that some clubs have a single computer that serves uh, all uh, comers when it comes to signing in online. Uh, but certainly as we advance in the hybrid world, I think it's here to stay. Yes. <laughs> uh, we will become uh, better and better at managing the hybrid meeting. So I think that's a good thing. 
because uh, some, some things just lend themselves very well to the hybrid environment. Uh, for example, uh, a TLI or a makeup TLI uh, is, you know, that lends itself quite well to the hybrid in, environment or, or even just an online environment. And that's one of the other advantages that we've learned, uh, for example, that we can attend meetings around the world or we can attend special events uh, outside of our district uh, on Zoom. And that's uh, something very valuable, I think. Yep. I can't wait for Kristen and, and Anthony to actually redo their presentation because I'm sure it's been a year now and I'm sure that it's a whole lot better than what they did before and I'm sure there's more equipment I was when she was doing her presentation the first time I'm on Amazon just buying you know the equipment <laughs> like we're going hybrid and we're going to be ready and we're still our club is still not meeting face-to-face uh, -face yet so we're still waiting for the credit union to open up it was such a central location that I think that our members don't want to give up that central location yet, you know, because either we're going to be in Henderson or we're going to be in uh, Summerlin, you know, basically. And mm -hmm. that's going to be hard for our Henderson people. And if we go to Henderson, it'll be hard for our, our Summerlin people as well. So we're still, you know, tossing it around. So hopefully that we get our you know, our levels down and the credit union says, let's open up and, and allow us to, to join back in. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, folks, you're right. Folks are starting to look for venues now. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, next year, all of our contests will be in person. Uh, but you went somewhere. As we transition back to meeting in person, we'll have to find our uh, specific venues yes. that, you know, some of them aren't there anymore. Uh, yes. So you have to look for new places. And one of the considerations is how well will that venue, um, you know, adapt to the, te to the technology? Yes. You know, there aren't many places that, that don't have Wi-Fi, for example. Yeah. <laughs> but, but there are a lot of places that have very poor Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, it tends yeah. to break up and fall apart. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we, we that add to uh, considering a, a venue for in-person meetings or hybrid meetings. Yes. All right. You have just a few more minutes, and I challenge this question to you that I was telling you guys yesterday that ask all of your guests. So I'm going to ask you, what benefit do you see to our audience? If you were talking, well, you are talking to our audience to join Toastmasters, what is a benefit of Toastmasters? Well, I think the main benefit for me was to become a better public speaker and to gain more confidence in that arena. Uh, when I joined Toastmasters, that was my primary goal was to learn how to be a better speaker. And I think I've accomplished that goal. But the other thing I've learned that is important is that it's not something uh, that you can sort of check off the box and then move on. Mm -hmm. It's something that requires practice and repetition, at least for me. Mm -hmm. you know, it is a skill that I think we acquire in Toastmasters or can acquire in Toastmasters, but it's a skill that we have to continuously practice yes. and if, if i find if i don't practice periodically give a speech periodically uh then i get very rusty <laughs> <laughs> and i don't like well, that yes and it definitely practice does doesn't just make you perfect you know it just makes you better so exactly All perfection right. is unobtainable so you just have to keep trying Exactly, exactly. So, Ken, thank you very much for joining us this morning. You will see Ken tomorrow with Phyllis at uh, 6 a.m. Like and we're going to have uh, uh, the folks from Jackpot Speakers are going to be on to talk about their upcoming evaluation extravaganza. So, hopefully yay! Great. I can't wait to see it. All right. Okay. Well, have a great Wednesday. I'm going to thank stay you. on just to give some announcements and then I am off. So, thank you. Have a great you. day. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye -bye. Bye. Well, 
I am really excited to have Ken on, and I hope you learned something today about him. And I just wanted to make an announcement of a few things. Our TLI is coming up in January, January 8th, so mark your calendar. Tonight, you shall see the uh, invitation on the website and on Facebook about that. Uh, for Saturday, we are having the Educational Enrichment Night, and that's going to be a lot of fun, as always. We will always have a pathway and new membership. We are going to talk about Meetup, and I can't remember what else, but don't forget to uh, sign up for that. It's in the newsletter for those of you who are receiving our newsletter, which is also on Facebook, so the login information is that on the newsletter. We also have game night that is going to be on January 1st. Start off the new year with uh, some of your Toastmasters friends and let's play some a uh, few games. I think other than that, I think that's all the announcements that is fit to print. Did I say that old Saturday Night Live uh, slogan? And I will see you guys next Wednesday before I sign off. Just want to also, if you want to be a guest with us, please let us know and we will uh, assign you to whatever day because we are here Monday through Wednesday at 6 a.m. every day. I hope you have a great day. Enjoy your nice rainy day and happy Wednesday. Have a great day.